let's look at something called Kirchhoff's loops or Kirchhoff's loops, however you want to say it. And those resistors in a circuit, well, let's put two of them in series. So if we we're going to draw a circuit like this, it'd kind of like this, it'd have a battery with a positive terminal and a negative terminal with some voltage V battery. And a wire might come out and go to one chunk of resistive material like that. We'll call that number one. And then maybe go to another chunk we'll call two like that. And there's your circuit, two resistors in series. Series meaning if you follow the current path, you hit one and then you hit the other. So it's a series of resistors. So one key to analyzing a complex circuit like this, or a more complex circuit, is that Ohm's law applies to the entire circuit and to each element. So what I mean by that is we can now write Ohm's law multiple times. We can write it for the battery. So this is sort of for the entire circuit. The battery isn't sentient. The battery doesn't know what to do. The battery just senses a resistance, so it sends out current. How much current does it send? Well, what, how much resistance does it send? So the circuit has an effective resistance that the battery senses. So we can write Ohm's law for that. We can say the voltage of the battery is the current in the circuit, and the whole circuit has to have the same current because it's just one loop, times the resistance, and I'll put CIRC, the resistance of the entire circuit. Sometimes it's called the equivalent resistance. We can also apply V equals IR to this first resistor. We could say, well, some of this voltage is going to go across one. So we could call that V1 equals the same current times R1. Why not? Well, guess what? We can apply Ohm's law to two. We can say V2 equals I R2. So we can apply Ohm's law three times. We have generated three equations. Surely we're done. Right? Three equations, three unknowns. Well, we have more than three unknowns. Let's see how many unknowns we have. We have V and we have R1 and R2. Or V battery R1 and R2, but we don't know V1, V2, the current, or R circ. Right? So we have a few too many unknowns. So we need more information. And where we get it is from the loop rule. It's Kirchhoff's loop rule, but I don't want to write it again. What uh, it says is that if you go all the way around the loop, the total potential change has to be zero, or the voltage change has to be zero. So if you start here, the voltage increases when you go across the battery by VB, and then it drops across resistors. You might hear the phrase voltage drop, right? So what the loop, the loop rule says is that the sum of the delta Vs, the voltages, has to be zero. So in this case, the only one that increases is VB. So how much you go up, VB, has to be equal to how much you come down, V1 and then back down to V2. V1 plus V2. So this is the extra information we need, is sort of an insight about how voltage works in a circuit. Okay. So now, to solve all this at once, uh, it helps to have some experience and to know what to do. But basically, you write this equation filling in these, okay? So let's see, VB is I times the resistance of the circuit. And V1 is IR1. And V2 is IR2. So you look at that and you say, oh, I can cancel all the I's. And you get that the resistance of the circuit, the effective resistance of the circuit is R1 plus R2. So this is always true. Whenever you have resistors in series, all you do is add their resistance. That's how you get it. The effective resistance of two is adding it. If there were three in series, you add all three. They just add. So this is resistors in series.